Hello, Ken Spriggs here with part two of my Mobius Ares 1B build. Uh, really, really loving this kit. It's really, really well designed and well engineered. Uh, I've learned some more things about the landing gear and how they can be displayed and stowed and that kind of thing. So I'll be showing that as I go. Uh, I've begun working on painting, well, first of all, completing the bottom half of the ship where I completed the, um, the outer shell and all of that on there. And I've begun doing some painting uh, during this particular build. And so the approach that I'm taking, and I've seen a lot of different approaches, and I've watched several other builders out there on the internet, which I'm really happy to be able to see because I like different takes on it, and I like how different people approach the same subject. So uh, there is a lot of questions out there about the color of this ship, or how it looks, or, you know, in different different opinions about it there certainly is an actual the actual one of the actual models on display in california i believe at the motion picture or something like that but um it is one of the original filming models that was found and uh i don't know what level of restoration they did on it or if they did any on it but um there, there are definitely a lot of pictures from that. And I even have some pictures from some people I know that have gone there and seen it and take pictures of it as well. Now, one thing to consider, and one thing that I have considered is that regardless of whether or not this is an original model from the show, or regardless of whether they did any heavy restoration, which I don't think they did, you have to understand that this model is over 50 years old. So, Unless it was maintained in a pristine condition, which I don't think it was, it is not going to look the same as it did when they filmed it. Because no paint lasts that long without some kind of preservation. Which is why a lot of times you see people getting really, really old cars and they restore them. Because you have to. There is going to be damage to it. There is going to be problems. And that's, of course, if you have something that was maintained very carefully and protected from the elements and that sort of thing. Which I don't think this was. So I'm... I go, I'm using that as, as a reference, but I'm kind of steering away from the heavy, 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 you know, damage and rust. Because a lot of it, I think, is legitimate weathering, <laughs> legitimate damage, legitimate issues with this model that, um, that have happened over the years and however it was stored. So uh, another thing that you want to consider is that we're always looking, I'm always looking to make the model look as it did in the film. So even if this model looked differently in a lighted room in a certain way, the way they filmed it is how I want to have it looking when I'm done. So that it looks like it did when they filmed it because he set it up in such a way that he wanted to do it with stark lighting on it. Uh, some of it, a lot of it's filmed in shadow when it's landing on the moon and you have a bright light from the side, which we're assuming is the sun. And it just, he, he went for that look, with he did, which he did with a lot of the ships in that film, where they're out in space and there's more of a stark light on them, uh, which it would be in space. So, so I'm, I'm putting together a couple different approaches on how I want to do this and how I want it to look. Now, I think there's a little bit of, <clears throat> of shading, very light shading of panels that are different, sort of like the Discovery, but not as obvious or as extreme as the Discovery. Likewise, uh, the Discovery, you really don't see, uh, at least not close-ups, where you see any damage or weathering or that kind of thing. Probably with the idea that Discovery was built for a mission and it was a fairly newer ship, whereas this is a workhorse and it probably has been in, in use for several years and it lands on the moon and it gets dust up inside it and all over it and that kind of thing. So a lot more obvious weathering on this. Not as bad as something like the Millennium Falcon, for example, which is really dirty and really weathered. But definitely a lot of weathering and a lot of like spills and oil spills and drips and that kind of thing. So I'm going to be looking at those also. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look.
All right, so as you saw from the previous stills, uh, and I didn't stop and show each of these, I got these engine assemblies painted. I also got the rest of the legs painted, the outer parts that I had attached after I painted the inner parts so I had better access to them. Uh, so the entire bottom is now glued together with the exception of the little covers that go on here, which I won't do until after I get the, the side bottom of the ship placed on it. Uh, I also got this little column in the middle glued in place. Now for these ones, I had the nozzles glued onto the flat plate that's inside of here. Before I did that, I painted this black and I painted gray around the outside. And then I glued those in. Uh, now I glued them in first before they were painted and then I went back and painted it. It worked out pretty good. There was some few spots that I was having a hard time getting into as far as you know that angle of it so i probably would have in the future done that ahead of time like sprayed these parts black before gluing them in place but they worked out so um so i have everything glued in place and again this is just like a base coat which i'm going to go over with some some flat white now sorry for shaking the camera there and um but i wanted the engines to start with a darker base rather than the dark gray all this is going to be brought up brought back up to a lighter gray but i want these to be darker and I'm still going to be doing weathering other things in there as well. So, all right. So I'm ready to go ahead and start getting a flat white misting over the whole thing. <clears throat> and like I had said prior, uh, I want to make sure that, I mean, I'm okay with some of the inner parts, like down in the center there, staying darker and more light on the outside, because that's going to be perfectly normal that further up inside these engines are going to be dirtier from just the wear and the, all the moon dust and everything getting kicked up into there. So, all right, so let me go ahead and get a misting of flat white on this. And then we'll get our, that'll be our true base coat from where we'll go and do some weathering as well. All right, so I did my first pass of flat white that I misted over the engines, the legs, all the different parts. And as I said, so the parts that are further down inside, I didn't really bother putting too much on because they're gonna be covered. You're not gonna see them. Also down in that part there, I'm not worried about getting the paint all the way down in, but I did get it underneath like those areas, that cone, that um, cylindrical part underneath the engine cones, certainly the legs. Now, the thing of it is I started light and I'll just kind of let this settle for a bit and see how it looks once it dries completely. And then uh, if I need to, I can always go back and do some more. So, cause it is a little bit dark still right now, but, uh, but certainly I lightened it up quite a bit. And then the engines, they were even a little bit darker because I started with the black. Now, the beauty of this technique is that you don't get a nice even, get some light on here. Yeah, there you go. You don't get a nice even color, which is what I want. I don't want an even color. These engines would not be all just one light gray. So rather than starting with light gray, you start with the darker and then you do the lighter over it. That way you get some, some gradient. You can see all the Guinness foot pad. You get some gradient, you get some different shades, you get some randomness. It makes it look a lot more in scale to what this ship would be. So, okay. Sorry for the shadow there. So I will let this dry a bit completely and then I'll come back and revisit it and, uh, and then see if I want to do any more lightening up. And I'm still going to do weathering with oils and, and powders. So that's, that's still to come as well. All right, so I want to be able to light this um, without any wires coming off of it because I just think that would affect how it's displayed. And uh, the lights I'm using can certainly be run off of three volts and batteries. So that's, that's not an issue. But the question is where to have a battery pack that's accessible without any obvious panels that I have to remove. So the most obvious one that I've come up with is the door, the hatchway. And I figured out that a double A battery pack fits through just fine. 
no problem. Plenty of room on the inside. In fact, I'll probably have to build a little box so that the battery pack doesn't slide around inside of there because there's a lot of room in there. There's a whole big section. This whole section is all open inside. So you could have a whole nother deck there. And some people have even just even suggested making like an opening hatch and a hallway and that kind of thing. So that's kind of the, what gave me the idea that if I could remove that door, then I could have a battery pack in there and, and change it out. So what I did was I took the door, I did a few measurements on the inside and I cut out some styrene, two thicknesses of it, and I cut it out to match the inner diameter of this. And of course I cut off the rest of the part all around it and sanded it down and played with it a bit so that it would go in there nicely. And then the first level, because this is kind of a graduated thing, I had to sand almost entirely smooth to the opening. And then the other part, I made a little more snug so that when this goes in, it doesn't, it doesn't go all the way through. And now what I'm gonna do is with that in place, I'm gonna put a magnet in each corner with a little connector that holds it in place so that it can be removed from the outside. And I figured that was the easiest way to do it. I even thought about maybe something with a hinge on the inside and press it in, but that's kind of a hassle. Um, I might have to put like a little teeny tab on this that I can grab onto and pull it off. But the magnets aren't gonna be that strong. I'm probably gonna start with these little ones and see how they work. Because it doesn't hold any kind of weight on the model. It's simply holding that door in place. So I'll try to put those in place see how that works and if I can remove it fairly easily and it stays in place and that'll be my solution. All right, so I finished putting on the magnets to hold on the door. Looks pretty cool. So there's the back of it. Once I got those glued in place, I went ahead and put a five minute epoxy over them and over the magnets to hold them in place. So they're not gonna come loose. And this comes out. I still have to um, put something on the outside of this, some kind of a little tab probably up in this area plastic tab something I can grab onto and pull it loose it's got a nice grip to it Let's see if I just put it up there it goes in place so that'll be nice you have to move the double a battery holder dot around a little bit to get it down through those those uh, magnet holders but it works just fine all right so I went ahead also and I glued on these pieces here onto each of them because before I get these glued on to the bottom of the, of the kit, the engines and the landing gear, I want to get some paint on them, especially on the back. I want to go ahead and put some dark gray down on this bottom part over in this area because you can kind of see in there and see those, and I don't want those to be visible uh, from underneath. And also, I want to get painted on the outside. It'll be easier to do that now before I glue them on, at least the, the dark coat because then I don't have to um, worry about some overspray getting onto the other part at the bottom. So, all right. All right, so I got the coating of the dark gray over top of these two half sections. And you wanna be careful that when you glue them together, if you're gonna do it my way, which I did two together, which I think will work fine as far as attaching onto it uh, and then putting them together, you wanna make sure that they are in the proper order. So you have two, three, and then you have four and five. I don't know why they're two, three, four, five instead of one. I guess one is the very top dome, <laughs> which would make sense. So they have to go on. Now, the only thing I can tell <clears throat> that has to happen is that one of them, right there in the center, it has a little teeny tab coming down, as you can see. Not the tab from the outside, but that little notch. This one does not. So every other one has that, and there's a corresponding groove in the bottom of the ship that it has to be glued to. 
So you have to make sure that those are lined up with that. Otherwise, the bottom is pretty much just the same thing all around, and I don't think there's any certain side that makes a difference. Uh, these do, of course, because one of them has the door on it, and they actually do have different detail on them, so I'm guessing that they're accurate. Well, hopefully they're accurate. <laughs> all right, so I'm ready to go ahead and get these glued onto the bottom of the, the ship where the engines and the uh, landing gear are. All right, there we go. So I have all four sides glued in place and that worked really great with the two because I didn't have to worry about four seams. I just had to worry about two since the first two I already glued together and made sure they were straight and let them set up fairly nicely. So a little bit tricky getting those to set up right. Uh, thanks again to Lou Dalmasso for the suggestion. Where's it at? Uh, I did it wrong on one of them, but you can't see it down there, but I snipped it off. It just makes it a little bit easier to get that piece in there if you don't have that one little part cut out. Uh, so definitely check out uh, Lou Dalmasso, Aztec Dummy, and, and look at his builds. He has a really lot of, a lot of great suggestions, which I'm definitely following. So, all right, so looking pretty fantastic. Now, I did notice that if I put a roller down here and I measure from one foot pad across to the other foot pad, we're looking at almost a foot. But again, those, pre those foot pads are sticking out a little bit. If you measure from the top, and if you use, let me turn this around. If I measure from the extended um, thrusters, sorry it's about 11 inches so if I take this out to the edge of that thruster take it over to the other one you're looking at almost 11 inches and again I had measured this early on when I first did it the um, the actual actual dome this one's a little bit more than nine and a half inches across so is the top one but the top one isn't really half because if you notice I put this down on top of it it's not half because you have a nice thick section in between it where all the windows are so this is not the edge of this diameter of this is not the full width the diameter of this one is because everything else goes inside from here and then the other dome goes on top so all right but uh, a really magnificent kit for sure nicely designed nicely engineered <clears throat> certainly some things to watch out for certainly some uh some pitfalls which i have pointed out as i've gone along but really nicely done now you can see it's really starting to look like the aries which i'm used to and this thing is huge as my arm so it's very very big i really like how the landing gear are engineered how they can go in and out nicely designed nicely detailed so all right, so I'm going to let that set up overnight. And then we'll go ahead and we'll see what we're going to start working on next on this build. So, okay. All right, so a little bit of cleanup on the seams that went together. Uh, the ones that I didn't glue beforehand were a little rough, so I glued them a little bit tighter, and then I went through and sanded them. And I just decided to go ahead and do it on all four of them just to kind of make them all sort of even. I'm not gonna fill this in with, uh, with primer, not primer, uh, with um, putty or anything, because I think that natural seam looks fine there, that it would be a natural thing for that to be there, rather than trying to get that to be super smooth. So I just made all four of them the same and just kind of smoothed them out. And then I went ahead and put together these little engine covers. They weren't that bad, there's some little fiddly parts in them 
fiddly is the word. <laughs> you had to glue these little teeny pieces. Well, these things that snap on little pieces had to be glued in, but they were pretty easy to put in. And these just snap in place. I think they're going to be kind of odd when I put them on. I have to paint them first, but man, that's just really washing out the camera. Those two pins right there have to go into this little piece, get glued in place. And then these two little fiddly arms go into these little two little, these little pipe sticks here. But they don't get glued or anything in because they have to slide in and out as the engine opens and closes, that kind of thing. So, so we'll see, I'll play with it once I get it in there. Get out of the light. If, um, they just seem like they're real close to just barely fitting. What I could do is just glue an extra post onto the end of that, but I don't know how far that'll go in. I think it'll go in pretty good, we'll see. We'll play with it. But I'm not gonna get these on until I get them painted, of course. And ready to go. All right, so somebody had mentioned on one of the Facebook groups, but I, I, I tend to agree with them now that I see this with the legs uh, pulled up, that this thing is just one massive engine. The entire bottom of this is nothing but a big, giant engine. That's a bit of an overkill to, to power this thing. I mean, engine ratio to the rest of the ship is pretty outrageous and extreme. <laughs> But it definitely exudes power and the ability to blast this thing to the moon pretty pretty quickly. So I have noticed that the uh, the little locking mechanisms, you see one right down in there, they're easy to get to. I was afraid they would be difficult, but not really. Uh, sometimes they, They've been doing pretty good. They've been working pretty well without sticking too much, but... If you need to, it's not that hard to just get your finger down in there and just slide it. I'm sorry, it's it's pretty easy to pretty easy to access. No big problem there. Uh, the only thing it does not do, which I didn't realize, and I kind of wish it did, is it does not lock these in place. You cannot lock these pulled in. So as soon as you turn it up to the right side, they immediately want to flop down. So the locking mechanism only stops them from going back up so when you press it down onto the legs they they hold so that would be kind of nice if you wanted to, to display it in this mode if it were flying um but uh alas it doesn't work that way so and then obviously that comes back and pulls up on this which pushes back on these little covers here once i get those glued on so okay all right so I'm deciding what I want to try to do next as far as the assembly of this because I don't really want to paint these outer shells until I get the top because they're all going to have to kind of match. So I may just get a little bit of white on it just to kind of bring it up a little bit to a lighter gray, sort of like these engines. But I'm still going to be going over those all together uh, in the end once I get everything together because... The engines don't necessarily have to match the rest of the shell because I would expect them to be dirtier. But I definitely want the outer shell to be matching. So this with the top part needs to be matching and all the side pieces with the windows. So, all right. All right, so as you saw from the previous stills, I glued all of the little side sections onto this ring, glued the ring together. So this is the part that you're gonna see on the outside of the ship. Here's where the windows will be in between these two sections. And there's a little groove. You can see the window slides down into it. And I've already tested it. The windows will go in just fine after the fact. So what I wanna do is I wanna complete this part and I wanna complete the upper part that goes over top of the windows and not glue them in but put them into the into the kit uh, I'm going to take this part out but I'm going to have the top dome on the ship with these rings so I can do the outer painting on these and uh, and get the dark color and then maybe even the lighter color on it as well so this is all completed for now and this will just go right on top nicely around the edge of the bottom and right now I'm working on the one for the top. 
Now, one little modification I'm making, and uh, this is thanks to Lou Delmasso from Aztec Dummy, a great suggestion. You have the, um, let me get the other piece here. So you have the bathroom sections, and they come with the two yellow side rails on the bottom and the top already attached. So when this goes down on the bottom, this is all one piece and it comes up and it matches up with this. You can see how those two little pieces on the side match up with this part here. I don't know why there's a little peg hole there because nothing goes into it, but that's okay. So these pieces here all act as the, the upper part of the, the window section. So they go over top of this part right here to enclose the window. Otherwise, you would have that open gap looking up into the top of the, of the sphere. So what he suggested doing, since this is kind of awkward, the way this is made, is to go ahead and cut off the top ones and put them on the top piece because this whole piece should be one whole separate part. So all this that you see right here should be just one separate sub-assembly that can then be put on top of the ship or removed if you want to see inside. So what I did was I took my pole saw and I cut off the two top sections of this one, sanded that a little bit smoother. And then what I'm doing is I've already glued this one onto this piece here. Now I'm not gluing these pieces down into this part yet. All I want to do is use this to kind of position them so I can glue each of these together at their seams so I end up with one whole solid piece on this side and one whole solid piece on this side. That way I can then put those down on top of this and they'll click into these pieces and I can assemble just the exterior of the ship and then do some more painting. So let me go ahead and keep working on that. All right, there you go. So I glued these two pieces I cut off onto these two parts here. So then once this will be glued onto the, the bottom section, which is this upside down obviously, <clears throat> so when this goes down over top of it, this will just slide nicely down into there. And those two pieces at the top will all be, be in place. So I don't have to worry about these lining up right with these. And I have a nice clean upper section that comes apart. <laughs> Alright, so... I've temporarily just put the floor down inside of the kit. It's not glued together in the middle or anything, but I need it to line up these pegs so I know where this is going to click in for these little holes. And then what I did was, after I got the two upper rings glued together, well, the upper ones underneath, I went ahead and put this whole assembly down inside. And again, none of this, well, this whole ring part, all of these parts are not glued onto the top shell or to each other, but they are glued independently. So, as I showed before. So what I can do now is go ahead and position this on, on the top of this so that the weight of this will keep it down. I took some tape and I taped the parts inside and then I taped around the windows so that I can paint that inner part right there, but not get any paint on the inside of it because I don't want anything on the inside at this point. All right, so let me go ahead and get these positioned together, and then I'll be ready to go and put the dark gray on the top and in these window sections, and then I'll start looking at doing the, the white misting over top of it. All right, so I have the top down onto it, uh, not permanently, obviously. I did want to point something out, and, and again, mine isn't permanently attached, but one thing you need to consider when you're putting this together at the end uh, as I said, the bottom, well, the engine part is fairly generic all the way around. Certainly these panels are not because you have the door on one side and then you have some, some panels that are, uh, that are a little different. Now, there's only two ways that this can go on to the top, this way or flipped around the other way. And you'll notice, um, contrary to popular belief, the window is not in the center at all. It's offset. So it's off to this side here when you're looking at it like that. So the, the image, well, the image that I'm gonna end up displaying this as uh, shows it sort of in this, in this orientation when it's dropping down to the moon. So it's coming down, you see these two windows, they kind of look like eyes, 
<clears throat> and then you have the cockpit over here and it's it's angled down this way like you can see <clears throat> now when you put this on there are i don't know if it's over here but there's there's two pins close together on one side and two pins close together on the other side and the rest of them are single pins and they're separated a little bit more so it only goes down one of two ways like this or if you totally reversed it and the window was over on this side like that now the only thing is when we see it so you can see from this angle when we're looking at it the door is not over here it's over on the opposite side so that's the difference and that's kind of how i'm using this as the reference to go by from that picture because clearly in this orientation when we see it landing on the moon the door is not visible but if you reversed it and we would turn the whole ship around the door would be visible uh, on this side so all right All right, so one more thing I'm doing before I do the painting up here is I went ahead and painted these outer uh, landing leg covers. And I painted them on the inside. I tried not to get any on the little spot where it glues in place. So these are kind of fiddly, which is the, <laughs> the word for this kit here. You've got these little teeny arms which move and they go inside of these little tubes right here. And then that top piece glues onto this mechanism, which moves in and out. So the thing I was seeing with it, and it may not do it all together, but I was seeing these falling out of those little slots. So I just sanded a little flat spot on the end and I just glued a piece of styrene rod of the same side, size on the end of them, just to give me a little bit more play. So it's not gonna tend to fall out. And you can see this one's in there and this is kind of about as far as it's going to go, and I don't see that really happening. Because once you glue it in place, this makes contact up here, so it's not really able to have much play. Uh, but just in case, it didn't hurt anything, just in case that uh, we're falling out, because that would be a pain if those are falling out of there. And then... I have to turn it over and see how it works. I'm assuming when you put the legs in that it moves more flush with the body as well. So, all right, well, let me get these attached on as well. And then I'll be ready to start doing some painting. All right, so I made a correction. Let me go back and correct what I just did. I took those little pieces back off because uh, I realized, well, first of all, they weren't able to go in all the way, but um, these actually go in quite nicely. And when you press them all the way in, they, they go in with a, a little bit of a click. So they fit in nice and snug. Uh, in addition, what they also do, which I had wrongfully said earlier, they hold the legs in a closed position. So they they have a little bit of movement, just, just a little bit, nothing major. But yeah, you can see that right there. But when these are pushed in, they hold the legs from popping out on their own. So if you wanted to display this, in this mode where the legs are all um, pulled up inside the ship and it's flying, you could certainly use these in order to hold them in that, in that place. In addition, those little arms don't pop out unless you could, if you pulled it far enough out, you could get them to pull loose, but they go right back in. So they're really not a problem. In fact, they're really nicely designed and engineered. So I'm really happy with those. All right. So, now that those are all in place, and also I do want to mention the little piece that this clicks onto, it goes on pretty snug and it almost kind of snaps on as well. So I did glue them, but you probably could get away with not gluing them because they're made to be tight and to snap uh, into position as well. But I didn't want them falling off, so I went ahead and glued them on as well. All right. <laughs>
right, and here is the first misting of white over the entire top part that I had already painted gray. So this is what I'm going to consider the base coat. Uh, I may do just a little bit more, but you can see already the idea that I was trying to talk about, and that is how the coat is kind of patchy, and that's what you want. You don't want it to be just one pure color of, of light gray. So I certainly could have done just pure gray, light gray, or you know whatever over an entire, you know, over the model, or even just a primered one. But in the end, to get this this detailed look, and also I'm trying to find some. If you look at like the the ridges here, it certainly retains some of the darkness inside of it. Let me look at it on top here. Yeah, like these ones here, you can see it still has some of the darkness. It gives it a different color, color shade when you have it that way. And so that's kind of the idea that I wanted for the base coat on here. Same with, uh, with these uh, thrusters here. Uh, and I've seen in several shots, these are not metallic in any way. They are just white like the rest of it. But there is certainly some dark, uh, like scorch marks and things like that. So definitely kept the dark inside of the nozzles. And now, of course, there's no weathering on this at this point at all, which is certainly something I'm going to be doing on this quite a bit. I also need to add a few extra details, which um, I have seen. And uh, Lou Del Masso pointed these out. And I was looking at the originals the original model from the from the film and I noticed it as well so these panels here are a darker gray than this section here and also looks like the inset panels on the cockpit are also that darker gray so I'm going to go over those again as well but in addition I'm going to be doing other panels that are darker and just a slight shade off um, and I'll, I'll go over that in the next video when I start doing some of that uh, added shading but I really like this approach. I really like how that turned out. And this is definitely very close to what I want it to be. Uh, so um, a lot of great progress on this model. And I'm going to continue working on it. And uh, really happy with how this is turning out. All right, so that's going to wrap up the second build, second part of this build. Coming along really well. I'm really happy with the progress. Um, other than the few issues that I mentioned and pointed out, uh, as far as like the cam stops, uh, the difficulty putting those columns together on the um, onto that bottom plate. Uh, it's it's been a fairly easy build and it's gone together well. Um, I'm also really pleased with some things that I thought wouldn't be easy to do or wouldn't be would be a problem like those little uh, landing gear covers and the little teeny spindly things that go into the slots. I really like those and I really like how they go all the way in and and kind of fit in there snugly that hold the landing gear in place. So if you wanted to display it in a, a retracted form that would work just great for you. So really nicely engineered. And I really like the fact that they made the landing gear able to be moved because that's a big feature in the film that the landing gear is extracted and retracted and then extended during the film when it lands. So definitely happy with that. So I'm gonna continue working on the exterior and then we'll begin working on the interior and getting some lighting going with that. So stay tuned all my subscribers. Uh, this project is coming along really nicely, and, uh, and I will continue working on that. And I have some other things in the pipeline that are coming up uh, in an, a future video as well. So, all right. Thanks a lot.